Hi you guys, welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Faith and I'm a gardener and homesteader here in North Florida in Zone 8B. And today we're gonna to be doing a farm to table recipe and making zucchini fritters. I always love throwing these videos in every once in a while because what good is all of this gardening if you don't know how to actually utilize your yield? So one of my really big goals for this year and something that I have been struggling to grow in the past is actually squash, which is strange because squash for a lot of people can be a really easy thing to grow. It's actually not hard to grow, but there are definitely certain um, disease and pest issues that I've had in the past that made it hard for me to grow. So we're just gonna briefly talk a little bit about growing squash and then make those zucchini fritters. So let's go. So I'm in my squash patch here and this is my squash row where I'm growing all of my winter and summer squash. Now you may be thinking winter squash isn't that for winter so if you're new to gardening you may not know that winter squash is actually grown in the summer but often it's a more hardier type of squash um, that can stay harvested better and stored better for a longer t amount of time so typically if you harvested it in the fall you would be able to have it and use it throughout the winter as well because its storage is better whereas summer squash is more tender and needs to be used quickly after harvesting it so i'm growing both summer and winter squash right now for my summer varieties i'm growing green machine zucchini a yellow scalloped squash and a yellow crookneck squash and then for my wintering varieties i'm growing butternut squash and cha-cha kaboka squash so for the most part squash is really easy to grow you can either directly sow it or you can start it inside as well but it doesn't like its roots to be messed with too much so if you do start it inside make sure you don't let it get root bound before you plant it in the ground so they grow pretty quickly so you may want to not start it so soon um, if you're gonna have a while before you can actually transplant it into the garden they like good loose um, well-draining soil full sun however if you're in a really hot climate like I am here in Florida they would appreciate a little shade they don't do as well when it gets too hot so if you're in a really hot climate it's probably better to grow squash in the spring or in the fall however if you do struggle with certain squash issues which has kind of been my typical issue in the past I struggled a lot with squash vine borers which they overwinter under the soil and then come back every year and so I where my old garden was I couldn't never seem to escape these dang squash vine borers so one of the ways to kind of avoid them is to actually wait more towards July and the fall to actually plant your squash that way you avoid having the squash vine borers eat all your squash there are also squash bugs which can kind of infect the squash plants with their toxins there um, are certain diseases like powdery mildew that make squash really hard to grow so if you're growing squash i really recommend bottom watering your plants and not watering overhead also again in florida is very very humid so i have struggled with powdery mildew in the past as well um, it's just really humid here and that's just something that we struggle with so there are definitely squash varieties that are more powdery mildew resistant so I recommend looking into those varieties and trying to gear your squash varieties towards that if something is you're struggling with um, other than that squash is pretty easy to grow you can also set up garden hoops and put insect barrier over that those garden hoops to protect them from insects um, like squash vine borers and squash bugs as well and if you're not wanting to do that squash can also be trellised um, maybe not so much the summer squash they can be kind of grown upwards it's a little bit harder to train them but especially the winter squash can definitely be trained to go up and around a trellis so that's pretty cool and looks really beautiful i've done that in the past as well so this is my green machine zucchini plant and this while it could be mistaken for powdery mildew it's actually just the natural coloring of this plant um, if it had powdery mildew, it would kind of have like a fuzzy appearance and then you could also typically see it on the underside of the plant. But I use drip irrigation and I've been, it hasn't gotten too humid yet here in Florida. Um, I mean, it's starting to get there, but it hasn't been too bad yet since we're still pretty early spring. Um, so these do not have powdery mildew yet. This is just actually the color of the plant and this can be on a lot of different squash varieties as well as melon varieties. So in here you can see I have some zucchini. Look at that, how pretty. This one's looking a little funky. That looks like it may not have been pollinated correctly. 
So speaking of pollination, squash is actually very easy to pollinate. It usually uses the help of our lovely bee friends, which you can see there. So this is a female flower, which has the stigma. It's called a stigma in there. And usually the female flower has the fruit attached to it. Whereas this is a male flower with a stamen and it does not. So typically to pollinate, you can either take like a paintbrush and brush off some of the pollen here and then brush it onto the stigma of the female flower. Or um, if you have a lot of bees, like obviously I just saw some bees, so I probably am not really worried about that. But if you weren't seeing a lot of bees, it's very easy to pollinate on your own. And you just, you can either tear off the flower and then rub the stamen on the stigma or use a paintbrush or a Q-tip or whichever way you wanna go about that. Also, this is one of my scallop squash. Just get that out. You can get it. Look how cute, a little scallop squash. So I'm not making the fritters out of these today, but definitely good to use these too. So you can do all sorts of stuff and recipes with your squash. You can make fritters, you can make stuffed squash, especially if you accidentally let one of your squashes get too big. Um, you can just saute them, you can roast them. I mean, really, there are so many great options, but today we're gonna make fritters, so let's go make them. So I've got all that I'm gonna get today. I'm gonna use these, I'm gonna save this until maybe I can get a couple more scalped one and cook that another day for dinner, but I'm gonna make these zucchini fritters. This will be enough to make the fritters. So before I go in, I also wanna harvest some herbs to go with my fritters to use in them and for kind of a sauce that I'm gonna be making. So I got some dill off of this dill plant, which I keep kind of with my herbs and flowers. So now I need to find some basil. Isn't everything looking so lush and beautiful? So here with all my lettuces and tomatoes, keep my basil. So I'm just gonna pinch it off right here. All right. All right, you guys. So for this recipe, you're gonna need a little bit of olive oil for actually cooking the fritters, two cups of shredded zucchini, one cup of breadcrumbs, two eggs, a third cup freshly grated Parmesan cheese, a fourth cup finely shredded mozzarella cheese, salt and black pepper, and, and whatever herbs you'd like to add to your fritters as well. So I'm working with what I have fresh, which is basil and chives. You could also add garlic in, which I didn't have, but I wish I would have had some garlic to add in. Really feel free to choose whatever herbs you think will work well. And keep in mind that if you have more zucchini than two cups, like say one of your zucchinis was ginormous because one of mine was, um, you can always scale up or scale down the recipe. So for what I videoed, I did scale it up a little bit and added an extra egg and because I had an extra egg, a little bit more cheese and breadcrumbs because I had more zucchini. So if you find that your mixture ends up being too wet because I kind of altered the recipe and added a little bit more, I ended up adding about a half a cup of flour which kind of helped to soak up all that moisture and help it form together a little bit better. So, so if your mixture is not making a fritter right and not sticking together, feel free to add some flour back in until you get like a nice little mixture that will actually make a good friable fritter. So I did not video it, but I did end up adding about a half a cup of flour to my own mixture because it just was not working without it. First, you'll need to wash everything thoroughly and grate your zucchini. Then you will need to squeeze out all of the excess moisture from your shredded zucchini. This works best in a nut milk bag, but paper towels will do in a pinch as well. Then you will dump your shredded zucchini back in the bowl and start cutting up your herbs.
You will then add all of your remaining ingredients to the bowl. Once your mixture is thoroughly mixed, preheat your cast iron or whatever pan you're cooking into medium heat and then turn it down just a little bit right before you actually cook your fritters. Then pour in your oil and you should be good to go. I find preheating really helps them fry better and for the cast iron to not have as much stick. I like to just kind of plop mine in and smush them out instead of trying to form a patty prior. I find this easier to do and less messy. Then cook them about four to six minutes on each side and then you should have a really yummy fritter. They don't need a sauce, but I always like to serve mine with some kind of little sauce, either a yogurt sauce or avocado sauce, just something simple to kind of dollop on top and that makes them extra delicious. So the thing I love about this recipe is that it's really easy and low fuss. If you find you have too much moisture in your mixture, maybe you didn't squeeze out the zucchini enough or there's a little bit more egg, uh, it's just really easy to throw in a little bit of flour, a little bit more breadcrumb and just kind of adjust the mixture until you get the right kind of goopy formula that you need to make a good fritter. <laughs> and when I make my fritters, I don't even bother really forming them into a patty. I just kind of plop them in the pan and kind of smush them out. I kind of like the raw kind of not perfectly formed looking fritter. I think it makes it more, I don't know, kind of rustic looking. Okay, that is all for me today, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and talking squash and making zucchini fritters. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye, you guys.